In the previous episode, we learned about how to load Emacs libraries and files from the disk, but we didn't talk about what those libraries might contain. Like any other program, uh, programming language, any library, like any Emacs list library might contain like several helper functions or data structures that we want uh, to use in our code base. But uh, in most cases, um, Emacs list libraries usually contain a concept like an entity called editing mode. Um, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the editing mode as a concept and the fundamentals that we need to know about editing mode before we can uh, move any further. Uh, and in the next episode, we're going to actually try to implement a, like a minor mode as an example to learn more about the details and the implementations uh, of different uh, modes in uh, Emacs. But editing modes, uh, like a editing mode, is a concept provided by Emacs that allows us to control the different aspect of our uh, editor, like Emacs itself. There's two categories of um, editing modes: major modes and minor modes. Major mode, like major modes in general, uh, are uh, mutually exclusive. So that means at any given time, we have just one active major mode in our Emacs. And major modes are tied to buffers. So uh, whatever buffer that uh, we are visiting at the moment uh, depends on the context. There's a, like a major mode active for that buffer that controls a different aspect of that buffer. And major modes are kind of specialized to handle a certain case of uh, content. For example, right now I'm using org mode as my major mode and all the syntax highlighting that you see at the moment or like every details about this, like every um, important detail about uh, this buffer right now is controlled by uh, org mode. When I switch to another buffer, then based on the content of that buffer, uh, Emacs decide to use another major mode. Like it depends on the content, right? For example, when I uh, like expand this item here or like collapse it again, that's what org mode as my major mode uh, like is doing, basically hand handling my uh, interaction with this buffer. Um, usually, um, major modes are in charge of like syntax highlighter or um, controlling the indentation and like the key map, basically like what key bindings, uh, like for example right now i'm in org mode right uh it is org mode that controls the key bindings that i'm use in in the current buffer and some other uh functionality that are really um depend on the content of the buffer um major modes are called, there's a, like a naming convention for uh, major modes that is like usually there's the name of the major mode with the suffix dash mode as an example uh, python mode or fundamental mode or emacs list mode c++ mode and other stuff there's always a dash suffix mode and any name that we create like this is actually a function or a interactive function i believe that we didn't talk about interactive functions before but basically an interactive function Ooh, I made a typo here. Um, yeah. Uh, basically, an uh, interactive function is just like a normal function that you can in, uh, uh, call it interactively via the meta x uh, interface. So if I do like meta x, I can call it like whatever I can call here, right? Whatever is accessible uh, and like provided to me here is just another interactive function. Uh, we're going to look at interactive functions obviously in the next episode but for now all you need to know is that interactive functions are just normal functions that you can call them via the command interface so every major mode is in fact an interactive function um, interactive functions uh, usually provide a key map again we're going to talk about key maps in the future uh, in the next episode but basically a key map is just a hash map from a key binding to a function so for, for example when i uh, use a key binding uh, that major mode tries to match it against uh, um, any key binding that exists in that key map and call the corresponding function 
uh the name of the key map usually comes with a, like a dash map suffix so for example in case of python the key map should be called python mode dash map uh, same goes for uh, hooks as well again in the next episode we're going to uh, look into ho hooks uh, in like a closely and like with more details but to put it simply a hook is just a list of functions that allows us to customize the way uh, the hook owner works so in case of uh, major mode and modes in general when we have a mode uh, for example, uh, the mode, the hook, sorry, the hook name is usually contains the dash hook suffix, as you can see here. So, for example, uh, we can have emacs dash list dash mode dash hook. Uh, emacs list mode is the hook, the mode name, and the dash hook here implies that okay, this is the hook belonging to belongs to the emacs list mode. Uh, whenever we add any function to this hook um emacs is going to call those function functions after emacs list mode gets activated it's a, like a really nice way to kind of customize the way modes works uh, after they get um, activated and again we're going to talk about the, them and create hooks and key maps in the next episode but uh, for now all we need to know is about the naming convention and the concepts behind them um okay so to show you an example if i open up a python file here just as an example right and I start to uh, create a function as you can see like by default emacs knows how to handle my python syntax right um if you uh, pay attention to the bottom like in my mode line here you can see that my ma it says python here so my major mode is python like i'm going to tell like show you another way to have more details about what major mode and minor mode you're uh active you have activated at the moment but right now this file is a python file and the major mode active in my buffer is uh it's like python mode I can actually switch to another uh, mode for example let's say i do meta x and fundamental mode right so i switch from major mode like from python mode uh, to fundamental mode as my major mode fundamental mode is just another uh, major mode that does nothing it's just you know it's the most basic type of uh, major mode out there and you can see that like i lost the uh, uh syntax highlighting abilities and ev everything like that i can just switch back with like activating python mode again and you can see that okay i have a uh, syntax highlighter and like the indentation will work the way i like i expected to in a python buffer also um python uh, python mode actually provides some key bindings to evaluate the buffer to run the buffer uh, using python same goes for emacs list mode and other stuff and when i switch back to my uh, org mode file now the major mode is uh, org mode it, you can see it in the um, like a, a bottom uh, like in my mode line but the point is like every buffer as i mentioned has a, like a major mode and you can switch between the uh, like between major modes uh, as you please but how does actually emacs knows what uh, major mode to use for what buffer there's like um i'm kind of trying to summarize the process as like into a, like a uh one or two paragraphs but uh, there's more de uh, details in involved in this process i included a link uh, for those who are interested and want to learn more more about the process but um to make it simple and to simplify stuff and to have uh, like a summary of the process there's a there's a variable there's a, like a associate list called auto dash mode dash list as you can see here this one uh, uh it's a list that contains uh, a lot of pairs and the keys in, in in this a list are just a bunch of regular expressions and the values are uh major modes we already learned about uh, a list in the like previous episode i can't remember uh, which episode it was 
but basically what happens is when you open up a, a file or you visit a buffer you visit a file or a buffer emacs tries to match the buffer name against all the patterns in this uh, alias as soon as uh, as soon as emacs uh, finds uh, like a match it tr uses the value of that match which would be uh, like a major mode and calls that major mode and activate that major mode for the buffer there's like other detail again there's like other details involved in this but um like most of the time you when you have a, when you want to introduce a new uh, major mode into your emacs for a new type of buffers that's where you need to make changes like you need to add more patterns in that uh that auto mode alias again if you're interested i included a link to the emacs mode uh to the Elis uh, manual so you can uh, read more on your own and finally i showed you already how to switch between major modes but there's like two other functions uh major mode dash suspend and major mode dash restore as the name suggests uh major mode suspend just suspend the current major mode and switch to fundamental mode it's like record all the local variables and everything and when you call major mode dash restore it just restores everything to the way it was and for more information you can read about major modes in emacs mode uh, emacs uh, manual but major modes are a kind of a big deal for us as uh, people who want to use emacs and you know develop emacs as well because whatever buffer you have you definitely have to use a major mode and you have to know how to deal with them but as someone who want like but it rare like you might not ever write a ma major mode right because like i don't know like if you want to write a, write a major mode you definitely have like a certain use cases uh just because of that we might not talk about like how to create a major mode in the near future but in the other hand minor modes are quite useful and you can use them like we're going to use them frequently so uh we need to know how to define a minor mode but what is a minor mode uh just like major modes minor modes are um editing modes as well but the difference is um unlike major modes uh, minor modes are not mutually exclusive so you have you can have like many minor modes active at the same time there's like two type of minor modes we have like buffer local minor modes and uh, global minor modes buffer local minor modes are those minor modes that kind of tied to your current buffer so if you change to another buffer your minor the set of active minor modes might change and global minor modes are active no matter uh, what buffer you're visiting uh, usually minor modes control uh, like a certain they provide uh, like a certain feature and they control anything around that feature uh, either uh, like a GUI feature or like something uh, around you know any feature that is not kind of buffer uh, related like n is not tied to a buffer to show you an example le let me just uh, load up emacs like this is like normal emacs right I, with no configuration um as you can see right now i have a, like a title bar uh, it's like uh, sorry a toolbar here a scroll bar on the left and like my mode line is like different than my usual one all of these are controlled by uh, global minor mode so if i um if i go to the use the meta x interface to disable for example toolbar mode toolbar mode which is a minor mode to control the toolbar if i disable it as you can see my toolbar uh, is gone now i can i can um, enable it again and it's back or i can change the way scroll bar mode yeah there's like a mode to control the scroll bar and when i de deactivate it, it uh, it's gonna go away so basically that's like my emacs right now doesn't have uh, most of the elements that you saw in a, like a vanilla emacs that's how i did it i just disabled the minor modes like global minor modes that i don't need but some minor modes are um, kind of buffer local so they do something 
uh, in the local buffer. For example, you might notice that I have a, like a grammar and a spell checker in um, in my buffer at the moment, right? I'm using a tool called uh, language tool or something, and I have a minor mode active that actually uh, takes care of uh, like grammar checks and like typos in my local buffer. My my buffer is uh, still controlled by org mode, but uh, the function this specific functionality is controlled by another mode called language mode, right? So, for example, I have a typo here. I have to fix it. I have to fix it, right? And um, yeah, that's minor modes for you. They're like quite simple, but yeah, uh, quite handy at the same time. In order to enable and disable minor modes, or all we need to do uh, is to call their function. Uh, just like major modes, minor modes, uh, like fo they follow the same naming convention. So the minor mode uh, itself is just a function. It's a, like an interactive function. We can call them either via um, the meta interface, like the command interface, and just when we call a minor mode here, and to, um, no, not that one. I can't remember the one, uh, the exact name, but let's say projectile, yeah. Projectile mode, sorry. Uh, uh, for example, the projectile mode is just uh, like a minor mode. Uh, if I call it, it's going to deactivate the, uh, mm, minor mode for me because it was uh, previously active if i call it again it's going to enable it as you can see on the bottom left uh so that's the way to toggle it uh, toggle a uh, minor mode uh, via the command interface but pro like if you want to kind of interact with a um, minor mode via elist we can uh, call the minor mode itself passing a non-negative integer to it to make sure that it's going to be enabled so if i call this function uh, many times, any any time I call this, blah mode would be enabled. Even if it's previously enabled, it's not going to toggle it. It would remain enabled. But if I if I want to disable a minor mode, I can pass it like a negative function. Uh, sorry, negative uh, integer to it, and it's gonna disable the uh, minor mode. So. Um, Here's like we talked about minor modes and major modes, like and what they are, but we need some fun, like more information about them to kind of um, to know how to actually uh, uh, work with them and kind of to make sense uh, to have a sense about like uh, what major mode or minor modes we might have active at the moment. There's a like a command and like an interactive function called describe mode. When I do uh, meta x and describe mode what it does is to show me a summary of what's going on in my current buffer right it shows me as you can see here it shows me what minor modes do i active uh, do i have active at the moment so i have like auto composition auto con uh, auto compression auto encryption and like bunch of other uh, minor modes as you can see they're not uh, mutually exclusive so i can have as many minor modes as i want some of them are global as you can see global highlight line is like a global minor mode or global company mode and i have like bunch of uh, like local uh, minor modes and then it tells me what major mode do i have active org mode defines in org.el is like my major mode like explanation about like uh, the org mode itself like uh, any other major mode that i'm using and then all the key bindings that uh, are available to me either via uh, the major mode or other minor modes that are active in my uh, buffer right so like a really handy way to learn uh, what is what and how to kind of uh, use an, any major mode move uh, further down uh yeah and like about different uh, hooks that might be available to me and some uh, documentation about any minor mode that I have active um, in my current buffer. So there's a lot of information like key bindings of uh, my minor modes and so on. So whenever you want to gain more information about uh, things that might be available uh, to your uh, in your buffer, uh, you can use describe mode a quite handy function 
there's another uh, variable called local minor modes which is just a list and as the name suggests it contains all the currently enabled minor modes that are uh, buffer local um, another like the counterpart of the previous variable is called global minor modes uh, that is a list containing all the currently enabled global minor modes and finally minor modes a list of all the minor modes available to um, to you um we talked about the basics of editing modes but it might sound a little bit vague at the moment but in the next episode we're going to actually uh, create a test minor mode like we, we go, we're going to actually create a, like a really a small minor mode to cover uh, everything that we talked about today uh, around hooks key maps and everything and um, when we actually uh, start writing some codes everything would uh, click for you um, but we had to kind of talk about the fundamentals and the basic concepts of the, uh, basic concepts first um, that's it for today and uh, hope to see you in the next episode.